This is Tom Fulp. And if you've heard that name before, you've probably spent a lot of time in the late 90s and 2000s on a website called Newgrounds.com. Created all the way back in 1995, Newgrounds was a site dedicated to hosting animations and games made using a little web-focused multimedia program called Flash. Lots of other sites would take inspiration from how Newgrounds functioned, but it's the site's content that truly shaped the internet. Newgrounds launched with the slogan, The Problems of the Future Today, a jab at the mundane phrase, The Generation of Tomorrow. But the site's motto would change in 2006 to Everything by Everyone, a slogan Tom thought better encapsulated what Newgrounds was all about. The site continues to push this point home, welcoming everyone to share their original animations, games, art, and music all across the site. Newgrounds thrives on its community, encouraging people to meet and collaborate on projects of any size. In order to make this video, we reached out to several creators from the platform, including Tom himself, to present a more intimate history of the site, the games that it spawned, and the relationships it helped flourish, and how it impacted the gaming industry. And while he may be Newgrounds' chief architect, Tom has published his own fair share of creations to the site. Most notably, and recently repopularized, original character Pico, a sexually ambiguous ginger lad rocking some semi-automatics and a green shirt. The large, vacant white eyes of Pico and Tom's other characters were directly inspired by Little Orphan Annie comics. Why was Tom such a fan of Little Orphan Annie comics? I have no idea. <laughs> Other influences on Tom's characters came from South Park and a desire to make parodies of cute edutainment games. Tom's first take on the idea was with the game Pico's School, which follows an ordinary day at school until without warning a group of goth kids, led by a group of aliens known as the Penalians, start a shootout. Pico is now tasked with defending the school and stomping out the ensuing chaos. Newgrounders loved the game, but there were many who felt it was made in poor taste, as it released only a few months after the tragic Columbine High School Massacre. A number of people connected with Pico and the anxiety he experiences throughout, but others were not particularly fans of the vulgar themes and satire paired with such a grim event. But Tom just wanted to make something unique and outlandish, and had no intention of social commentary on the tragedy. Even with the meek controversy swirling around, Pico's school set the foundation for Tom's vision with Newgrounds. While Pico's school could easily offend, it also had a very comical and absurd amount of cartoon violence that gave it a substantial disconnect from reality. There aren't many games where players have literal shit thrown at them, and the final boss waves his dick around until you blast it off with a torrent of dick blood raining down all over the damn place, until you somehow return to school with your mental health completely intact, despite this unspeakably fucked up event. Okay. After Pico's School launched in 1999, Tom was quick to begin work on Pico's School 2, and would restart development after Mind Chamber joined Tom as the artist for the project. While a few design tests were done with other artists, Tom fell in love with Mind Chamber's rendition of Pico, which captured his fun spirit and innocence best of all. A good deal of work went into the project and was looking to be another impressive Flash games in Tom's repertoire of achievements. Unfortunately, after thoughtful consideration, the scope of the project was deemed too ambitious, and Pico School 2 was put on indefinite hold. The story of the sequel originally continued right after the end of the first game, with the Penalians sending in replacements for the goth kids in the form of ghetto bots. Now city-sized in scope rather than just Pico's school being at risk, the dick aliens were steadfast in striking fear into the general public and destroying society to prepare Earth for totalitarian rule. All was not lost, however. Tom would continue to watch over this site and work on other projects, one of which was Alien Hominid, a collaboration with artist Dan Paladin. Alien Hominid is a run-and-gun style title that follows the titular character crashing down to Earth rather unluckily right in front of FBI headquarters. An organization in this universe who don't particularly like aliens and would rather shoot first and ask questions later. While the game was fairly short, the cartoonish violence and antics that Newgrounds content was famous for quickly became another hit among its users. For years leading up to this, Tom would spend his days dreaming of making a legit console game. But while hopeful, he wasn't sure they'd ever come to fruition. Nevertheless, he'd continue dreaming. Tom would compose 20-page game design documents, occasionally mailing them out to his favorite game companies like SNK, 
hoping his pitch would be greenlit into being made. However, Flash was his real gateway into the big leagues, and he'd make his start by co-founding his own game development studio, The Behemoth, in 2003. This company was on the cusp of making history for all the indie web developers out there, as they were on the verge of bringing their breakout web hit, Alien Hominid, to consoles. Tom's dream was finally realized in 2004 when Alien Hominid saw a full console release in the US and UK on the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. The title even got a Game Boy Advance port in 2006. This retail version of the game was much more ambitious than the original Flash title. New features, mini-games, overhauled visuals, and a two-player mode were all added. What started out as a humble Flash game would turn out to be one of the biggest steps forward for the indie scene, being a huge source of inspiration for all within it. After the game's success, Tom purchased an office in the Philadelphia suburbs dubbed, surprisingly, the Newgrounds Office, that would grow to become a hub for artists and devs from the site. Asked for a few words for aspiring developers, Tom had this to say. For developers starting out, I would say not to shy away from making silly joke games or joining in game jams. Whatever gives you motivation to complete a small task and learn something along the way. For developers who've been at it for a while, I'd say persistence is important because you never know when you'll capture lightning in a bottle. Also, if you're an up-and-coming dev, don't hesitate to reach out to up-and-coming artists and musicians you like. Today's talented nobodies will be tomorrow's successful in-crowd. As Newgrounds grew up, it would adopt a new tank-inspired logo in 2000, designed by Andrew Brosnia. A few years later, it would be reworked by Jeff Bandolin, hey that's me, for the site's redesign in 2006. The tank redesign went through a few wildly different iterations, but eventually stuck with a more refined version of the original. A few months after the new logo was introduced, I said, hey Tom, I quit. And Tom said, shut up Jeff, just go make a funny cartoon. And then we briefly gazed into each other's eyes, smiled mostly platonically, and I was off to the races trying to make an animation that wouldn't embarrass the company. Anyways, this was the beginning of a delightful military-inspired logo growing into a full-blown child-friendly mascot. The Tankman series is almost entirely about awkward relationships and dynamics between soldiers in an apocalyptic wasteland, but there are dick jokes too. The two main characters, Captain and Steve, Hell, almost every character are based on my own exaggerated personality traits because I'm actually a terrible actor, so this is how it had to be. Captain is more cartoonishly arrogant and hard-edged, while Steve is younger and more naive. I found it relatively easy to write scripts essentially arguing with myself because I am a sociopath. The shorts were a hit with users and Tankmen helped grow an even stronger identity for Newgrounds and its brand of humor. Anything made with Flash was notorious for its low file sizes, making files very easy to pass between person to person for collaborative projects, no matter the distance between those involved. Unfortunately, the Flash Player, a browser plugin which Newgrounds was pretty much founded on, was discontinued by Adobe at the end of 2020. Nevertheless, Newgrounds would pivot and make the best of the situation with the release of a fully featured video player, other browser-based game support, and Ruffle, a Flash emulator to run and preserve all the Flash content made throughout the years. While Flash was initially built for easy creation of a host of web multimedia, it has been kept alive by passionate independent and studio animators alike. So Adobe rebranded it as Adobe Animate with a sharper focus on animation. Even with older Adobe Flash software not being actively supported by Adobe anymore, Several users across the site still use it for animation within their projects due to the fact that it still just works. A personal example is Nightmare Cops, an up-and-coming console and PC game by Newgrounds collaborators Tom Fulp, myself, and Spazkid, with the group primarily animating all the characters and assets with Flash. Another Newgrounds title with art created in Flash that became very popular recently is Friday Night Funkin', a rhythm game put together for the 47th Game Jam hosted on Ludum Dare. The theme of this particular Game Jam was Stuck in a Loop, which inspired Friday Night Funkin' developer Ninja Muffin 99 and artist Phantom Arcade to make a rhythm game where characters sing or rap battle back and forth, in a similar vein to Parappa the Rapper. To round out the team, they reached out to Kawhi Sprite as the game's composer, alongside Evil Skater as an additional artist for the weekend project. In a touch of irony, the title didn't even perform that well in the jam, barely reaching the top 10th percentile of the other contestants. 
The game gained quite a strong cult following on TikTok and Twitter. Those TikToks are legitimately scary. I am serious. The team was already planning to continue development after the jam was finalized, and the public's perception gave them a huge gust of motivation. And their work paid off, as Friday Night Funkin' is now seen as a title that breathed some new life in the new grounds. The style of the game's songs were initially based on Parappa, but the inspiration for the voices came from another PS1 game called Vib Ribbon. The concept of characters posing in whatever directions pressed by a player are from an earlier game Phantom created on Newgrounds called Get Creamed. Eventually, the artist for Get Creamed, Maling, would work alongside Phantom again for week six. The design process for the cast of characters in Friday Night Funkin' usually started with an initial sketch by Phantom, then with a stylized interpretation by Evil Skater, and then a final pass again by Phantom finding a happy medium between the two designs. Inspiration for Girlfriend's design came from Rhythm Heaven on the DS, specifically a girl wearing a similar red dress and shoes. Originally, the speaker's girlfriend sits on were meant to be a podium, serving to present Girlfriend as a prize to the player. Scandalous! However, many fans of the original Ludum Dare build interpreted the brown boxes as speakers in fan art and messages, which the team thought was a better concept, so they stole that idea and went with that instead. The skeleton of Girlfriend is also based on the x-rays Body Snatchers would display in Metal Gear Solid 5. Boyfriend's inspiration loosely stems from early Cartoon Network shows like Dexter's Laboratory and the Powerpuff Girls. Daddy Dearest's character is more of a comical take on dating experiences Phantom Arcade had gone through. Other members of the Newgrounds office, possibly me, even joked that Phantom's current girlfriend's dad will end up beating his ass and he'd need to prepare to defend himself when the day comes. I said that. True story. Week one of the game was originally supposed to push this idea further, where Daddy Dearest was meant to grow more and more hostile towards the boyfriend, attacking him with karate kicks. The player would have been able to dodge these attacks through the help of visual cues and retaliate by throwing their microphone back in Daddy Dearest's face. Interestingly, Pico was originally only meant to be a selectable character skin and not have a week all to his own. But things changed when the team needed a foil to make more time for Mommy Mirist's character development. The location used for Pico is based on the exterior roof of the Newgrounds office. The song Pico also samples another song called Endless Handbag, the main theme used for Newgrounds back in 1998. Newgrounds has had many other successes over the years. Starting off as an animation series on the site, Madness Combat grew a massive audience across Newgrounds, even having its own day celebrated site-wide. The series is based on an unnamed man who would later be coined Hank, who sets out to take down an agency who wants him dead. The agency succeeds several times in killing him, but Hank is continuously revived and resumes his violent efforts. When asked if he ever saw Madness reaching the popularity it has today, Crinkles told us, Oh man, absolutely not. I got into this to participate. When I was first finding Newgrounds, it was way back before the portal was automated. So we were just watching Tom hack and back out his homebrew stuff and loving it. The humor was just the back of the classroom nonsense, but to have it on the internet at the time was such an experience. I was just glad to be feeding stuff back to the system that inspired me to start in the first place. To have it explode in my face is still to this day difficult to fathom. Fun fact, the iconic crosses seen on characters' faces in Madness are derived from general drawing guides of human faces. They serve as markers to help artists with facial direction and the space between features. Crinkles would fill his high school notes and sketchbook with these blobby characters and eventually stopped erasing the guidelines. This added so much uniqueness that Crinkles could just not simply draw the rest of the face. Delve into the medium still today, the Madness Flash games have potentially become even more recognizable. In 2003, Crinkles was approached by coder Max Abernathy about making a Madness video game, giving birth to Madness Interactive. The title became an instant hit on the site and both Max and Crinkles were blown away by the project's reception. The Madness franchise would continue to develop its story and characters further throughout its animations. While Crinkles was just starting to dip his toes in game development, games already had a strong influence on his work. The original XCOM on MS-DOS had a power armor set with asymmetrical optics. 
and similar looking headwear can be seen worn by members of the Agency Against Hank Wimbledon, specifically the Soldat and Engineer units. Crinkles would go on to work alongside another coder, Michael Swain, on Madness Project Nexus, nearly a decade after Interactive. Just as the quality of the animations was increasing with time, Crinkles pushed to keep the same standard with this new project. Madness Project Nexus ended up blowing Madness Interactive out of the water and became one of the most impressive projects on the site. The game would eventually be renamed to Madness Project Nexus Classic, as Crinkles and Swain would pivot to push Madness even further and bring the franchise into a 3D space under the same name. Super Smash Flash is another noteworthy Newgrounds game and one of only three Super Smash Bros. fan projects to have its own dedicated Wikipedia page. But this project wasn't always intended to be a Smash Brothers project. It was originally started as a Sonic fan game. Alongside being a user on Newgrounds, the game's creator Cloud9 also ran his own community, the McLeod Gaming Forums. These forums didn't have the largest spriting community, but a user by the name of TopCat13 had some of the best sprite work on the site. Cloud liked his sprites so much that he asked TopCat if he could use his work for the Sonic project specifically a Sonic OC by the name of Blade the Hedgehog. In early demos for the game, Blade was the single playable character. It would turn out later down the road that Blade wasn't solely original and bore a striking resemblance to another Sonic OC named Flare the Hedgehog from an animation series on Newgrounds called Knuckles Adventure. Eventually, the Sonic project by Cloud was dropped and at the same time, the math for that sort of project was just a bit much. The project shifted over to the Smash fan project known today and another character designed by Top Cat, Blue, joined the roster of playable fighters. The next character to join the roster was, almost unthinkably, Mr. Incredible from The Incredibles. Cloud told us about this choice saying, I was just a big fan of The Incredibles movie and there happened to be a decent sprite sheet on the Spriter's resource from a Game Boy Advance game, so I added them to my project. Cloud went on to push his coding abilities even further after the project's release making a sequel aptly titled Super Smash Flash 2 in the puzzle game Yeah Jam Fury. There's also a new indie crossover game called Frame Makers, where the tank man makes a cameo as one of the handful of assists. Cloud is broken into full-fledged game development, but will never forget his roots, telling us there's something about the creative freedom in the Newgrounds community that always made it an extremely inviting place for new artists and game devs such as myself when I first joined. And I think that's the main driver in how Newgrounds has stood the test of time. No other single community based around animation and games has had such a huge influx of creative work uploaded on a daily basis, and it plays a huge role in inspiring me to create and collaborate with others. Puffballs United may be better known for Among Us nowadays, but he originally got his start with the Henry Stickman series on Newgrounds, a popular choose-your-own-adventure style game. What might have not stuck with most players at first is the game is called Henry Stickman, not Stickman. Puffballs decided on the unique spelling mainly because Stickman comes off as boring and generic, and Stickman leaves a better impact. The name Henry has an even deeper history, being a name Puffballs used a lot throughout his work, being very common in RGP Maker projects he made when he was younger. Henry Stickman became well known for its large amount of pop culture references, ranging from Dragon Ball Z, Ace Attorney, Metroid, and more. However, Puffball's favorite reference he was able to implement was the JoJo scene in completing a mission. Puffball spent a lot of time on trying to make it feel as authentic as possible, as he was a big fan of the show and wanted to do it justice. Puffballs is another developer that got their small start on Newgrounds, and now they've made a game that has literally been played by over half a billion people with Among Us. One of the most notable faces from Newgrounds is Edmund McMillan, creator of Meat Boy and Binding of Isaac. Meat Boy actually started as a prototype platformer that focused on vertical levels rather than horizontal, called Vertigo, coded by Jonathan McGinty. Before tackling art assets, Edmund used a red cube as a placeholder, the simple cube started to grow on him, so he decided to use it as a base. Edmund originally wanted to revisit a concept of a character called the Meat Ninja, and the first design was a cubed human being turned inside out. This inside out body had a skeleton on the outside and wore an additional black hood. Over time, the design was simplified to help with readability, resulting in the character Meat Boy in the original Flash version of the game. Meat Boy would go on to be one of the most defining games for Newgrounds over time, and would be followed up with a sequel, developed by the newly founded Team Meat, 
under the name Super Meat Boy, released across digital services on console and PC. Edmund's main inspiration for the Meat Boy series has always been the Mario franchise, and he was even starting to reach a similar level of prestige to the plumber. The shortened acronym for Super Meat Boy is even a slight nod, literally SMB, just like Super Mario Brothers. Seeing a console release, Meat Boy's design would be adjusted yet again to help with the cutscene animation, and to be even more welcoming to a wider audience. The skeleton on the outside of Meat Boy was removed, with the character being presented more as a piece of meat this time around rather than being a kid without skin. Super Meat Boy was a roaring success, known for its difficult yet approachable level design. It became so popular, in fact, that PETA made its own parody in the same style as the original Flash game called Super Tofu Boy. Tofu Boy's mission was to stop the evil Meat Boy from his bloody rage in an attempt to save Bandage Girl from his clutches. Team Meat stayed quiet and gave no response to PETA's attempt to attack the IP. Instead, they went on to release Tofu Boy as an unlockable character in Super Meat Boy by entering the code PETA file on the character select screen. Tofu Boy is by far the worst playable character out of the cast having the lowest speed and jumping height due to his major iron deficiency. McMillan told us, I had officially made it. I was noticed by a huge company that gets easily offended. PETA went out of their way to pay someone to make a parody game off my game and characters. Edmund would eventually leave Team Meat to continue pursuing personal projects, opening the doors for Binding of Isaac, another title that has a history with Newgrounds. Isaac's history goes back to when Edmund was interested in pursuing a career in children's books, with Isaac's and Mom's designs originating from a concept called Mom's Hungry. This was meant to follow the story of a kid's father going missing, and due to the situation, the kid's mother requests her son grab her a wild list of food to tame her appetite. As she finished, she'd end up spewing all the food right back out. Ugh. The story was very similar to that of a tale called The Fat Cat which was a favorite of Edmund's as a kid. The Binding of Isaac started off with a similarly designed kid from Mom's Hungry, a little naked boy with a tuft of hair named Little Samson, named after the same biblical character. Isaac would eventually take the place as the main character, and Samson would eventually make his return as a playable character in the Wrath of Lamb DLC. Much how like Meat Boy was inspired by the Mario franchise, The Binding of Isaac took a lot of influence from The Legend of Zelda, Isaac followed a similar naming convention, dungeons, and top-down angle for its gameplay. The title aimed to take on an 8-bit style, but this was dropped due to issues of Flash processing the visuals too smoothly rather than pixel by pixel. A single visual has survived from this point in development, the original sprite for Isaac. The pixelated look would be revisited with a new refined 16-bit visual style in the release of The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. The more obscure pieces of inspiration come from Edmund following Miyamoto's initial inspiration for the Zelda games, his childhood experiences. Zelda came around due to Miyamoto's love for exploration. Edmund's childhood, on the other hand, centered around a family that was split across two sides, with his father's side being heavily religious. Once every so many years, Edmund would visit them for Thanksgiving. The Macmillans had very strict rules, and this resulted in Edmund having his magic cards being taken away not being allowed to watch Ren and Stimpy, forbidden from playing any Zelda games. In short, anything with a slight connection to the devil was made out to be evil. Edmund, while showing strong distaste toward the events back then, decided to embrace his childhood to help impact the development of Isaac. This resulted in the story of Isaac's very religious mother taking away anything that can be seen as marginally sinful, like toys, video games, and even clothes from Isaac. Other inspirations come from old school 80s Christian propaganda, Jack Chick being one of the largest influences. Jack Chick was a cartoonist known for his Chick Tracks, Christian propaganda comics, one of the most popular being Dark Dungeons, following a girl obsessed with the evil game Dungeons and Dragons, showing how it turns its players into cult members. How ironic. Major influences on Binding of Isaac's art style include Garbage Pail Kids, a gross-out parody based on Cabbage Patch Kids, alongside the Toxic Avenger. The Binding of Isaac would see a development time of around three months, with a demo released on Newgrounds, as that's where most of Edmund's following was. He simply told us, Without Newgrounds, I wouldn't have the legacy I have today. 
While all of these developers are great in their own right and all have contributed to the world of video games and animation, Newgrounds wouldn't be where it is today without Tom Fulp. While making this video, he collected comments from all the developers involved who wanted to share their thanks and gratitude with Tom. And since we just talked about Edmund McMillan's history with Newgrounds, let's start with his words. Without Tom Fulp, the Naughty's wave of indies wouldn't have existed. Without his selfless love and support for artists from all walks of life, Flash games wouldn't have existed, and games in general would be far less innovative. Honestly, without Tom, Meat Boy, Isaac, and many other games simply wouldn't have ever existed, and I'd still be working part-time at GameStop. Friday Night Funkin's Ninja Muffin 99 left a message too, saying, I love Tom Fulp. I want to pick him up like a little baby, feel a little hot, hot bottle of uh, evaporated milk, infant milk, and watch him grow up into a strong, powerful man. Greg McLeod, a.k.a. Cloud9, had this to say. I owe many thanks to Tom Fulp for founding the platform that enabled creators such as myself to find their spark, and inspired so much of the amazing content created on the web over the past couple decades. Whether it be independent animation, art, games, music, or all of the above, I truly believe Newgrounds fostered an entire generation of creative talent for which I'm grateful to have been a part of. I have a huge respect for Tom's ambition and proactiveness in adapting Newgrounds to the ever-changing landscape of the World Wide Web, and I look forward to seeing what's next. Puffballs United wanted to say, Thanks Tom. I wouldn't be where I'm at today without you, and I know I'm not the only one. The amount of personal passion you put into seeing other people's creativity is what makes the true heart of Newgrounds so great. Thank you for everything. Madness creator Crinkles exclaimed, Hey Tom, I want to thank you for creating Newgrounds. From the very first instant I saw that page, you can catch the subtle tagline of everything by everyone. Your passions were pushing you out into the arena of user-made content, and we were in awe, inspired. Like, hell, could we do this too? Before we knew it, you made the portal. And even before it was automated, it was a battle cry to squeeze artists out of the woodwork and start sharing on a global level that nobody had seen before. I'm glad to have been here to be a part of it, my dude. And Kawhi Sprint had this to say. I have to give eternal thanks to Tom Folk for everything that he's done for me in my career. If it weren't for Newgrounds, there would be so much art, music, and games that wouldn't be here. Thank you for supporting the underdogs like I used to be, when there's so many other websites that seem so calculated cold and based on an algorithm, Newgrounds is like the opposite of that. It's curated and organic, and it's not based off of likes or anything like that, and I think that's punk rock. Tom Folk a real homie. We even have some words from Tom Fulp himself, who leaves Did You Know Gaming with this final message. Newgrounds represents the promise of the internet, where anyone can make something and share it with the world. I think no matter how the internet changes and evolves, this will always be the best thing about it. Having seen so many sites come and go, I think it's important Newgrounds continues to keep its history alive, while still making new history every day. Everyone is welcome to share their original animation, games, art, and music on Newgrounds. We love seeing cool original works, and we love it even more when people meet and team up to make things together. Thanks, Tom. Not just from me personally, but all of us at Did You Know Gaming. It's amazing to think Newgrounds taught me about a culture I'd grow into as I got older, and now my nephews are all doing the same. Let us all keep that spirit alive. While you're here, why not check out a couple of our other videos, and if you don't want to, why not just go to Newgrounds instead? It's uh, no doubt far cooler than anything that we will ever say in our entire lives. And why not leave your own message for Tom, because he's no doubt going to watch this video. Or just let us know what your favourite Newgrounds game was over the years. There's been so many, no doubt you have your own personal favorite. 